Olena assists Marjorie in picking out a necklace for her upcoming wedding. She selects the finest of those on offer, noting affectionately that it is similar to one she received from Marjorie's grandfather on her 51st name day. Olena chucks the piece over the rampart and into Blackwater Bay and orders the Tyrell handmaidens to canvas every jeweler in King's Landing for better offerings. After they are left alone, Marjorie sardonically suggests letting Joffrey pick out the necklace, which knowing him will likely consist of severed sparrows' heads. Olena cautions Marjorie to mind what she says, even with her. They are shortly interrupted by Brienne of Tarth, who has come to speak with Marjorie about Renly's death. In private, Brienne explains what she saw and how the shadow had Stannis's face, and assures Marjorie that she will find a way to avenge their king. Marjorie reminds Brienne that Joffrey is their king. Now, Brienne apologizes for any offense given, but Marjorie assures her that none was taken. Marjorie's wedding to Joffrey goes off without a hitch. At the wedding feast, however, Joffrey's cruelty and twisted sense of humor become apparent in the tasteless performance of the War of the Five Kings he has performed and in his treatment of his uncle Tyrion. Marjorie is only barely able to distract him, proving her control over him is fleeting. Everything is cut short, however, when Joffrey is poisoned and dies in front of Marjorie's eyes. As the capital is in mourning, Marjorie inquires to Olena if she is actually the queen or not. Her grandmother tells her she is more so a queen now than she ever was with Renly, but the lack of consummation in both circumstances limits her authority. Nevertheless, advises her to not press the issue just yet. She tells Marjorie of how she felt when Luther Tyrell died, but also says that Marjorie is at least lucky that her third marriage should be easier than the other two. Marjorie is surprised by this, but Olena points out that the Lannisters need their alliance with the Tyrells far more than they do. Marjorie learns, to her disappointment, that Olena intends to return to Highgarden before Tommen's coronation. Her grandmother tells her that she should be able to handle things herself from this point. Before she leaves, Olena tells her about how she seduced Luther Tyrell to get out of her engagement to a Targaryen, and advises Marjorie to make her move on Tommen while Cersei is still distracted over Joffrey's murder. Marjorie is confused by Olena's certainty that Tyrion is innocent until Olena makes it clear that she would never have allowed Marjorie to marry, that beast, heavily implying that it was she who poisoned Joffrey. Later that night, Marjorie steals into Tommen's bedchamber, apparently easily sneaking past the Kingsguard. She discusses rumors of their upcoming wedding with him and interacts in a friendly manner with his cat, Sir Pounce. Marjorie and Tommen bond over their relief that they won't have to live in fear of Joffrey anymore. Marjorie asks if she can visit him again in secret. Tommen agrees. Realizing that she must be maternal in her initial manipulation of him, Marjorie gives him a kiss on the forehead as she leaves. Still dressed in mourning clothes, Marjorie watches Tommen's coronation from the side gallery of the Great Hall. Cersei approaches her and engages her in conversation. To Marjorie's surprise, Cersei says that the things Joffrey did shocked her, then asks rhetorically if Marjorie thinks many things shock her. Cersei asks if Marjorie still wants to be the queen to which the lady replies that she hasn't thought about it. Cersei ignores the obvious lie and says that Tommen will need someone to guide him. Apparently, she doesn't have the will to fight about Marjorie being that someone anymore. Cersei and Tywin later set the date of Marjorie and Tommen's wedding to right after the mourning period is over, a fortnight from the coronation. Along with her brother and father, who is one of the three judges, Marjorie is present at the trial of Tyrion Lannister. Although she wasn't close to Tyrion, she looks visibly displeased at the proceedings, well aware that Tyrion is innocent and the trial is a farce. Nonetheless, Marjorie remains silent throughout the trial. Guiltily, knowing that her grandmother is the real conspirator, Marjorie watches as the trial goes awry and Tyrion demands a trial by combat.